uh, observed uh, after uh, conducting the first experiment regarding the fruit flies. So Morgan is prized highly uh, 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 due to his patience and and observations throughout the process. And why it is having like this? Why we are having this 17% or 15% or 7% of uh, of this frequency of recombination? Why not we are having 50% of it? So let's talk about what you call a linkage map. So how are you talking about a linkage map? What's a linkage ma map? It's simply a genetic map. So what is a genetic map? Genetic map is a representation of genes in a different locus of a DNA or of a chromosome. So if you have a chromosome here, we have different genes. So we have gene 1 here, we have gene 2 here, we have gene 3 here. So there are different genes uh, which is sit on the chromosomes. As you know, in eukaryotic cells, we have lots of junk part in the chromosomes which actually not function as a gene, which not functions as a, as a, a encoded material for co uh, for coding proteins. And in, in these chromosomes, we have these genes and, uh, and those genes uh, are separated with each other via different nucleotide sequences. For example, we have suppose here 7 nucleotide di sequence difference, we have 10 nucleotide sequence difference. So the nucleotide sequence that separates those genes apart, we call them the MAP uh, unit. We have 7 nucleotide sequence difference, we call it the 7 MAP unit. And we have, an, we have 10, so we have 10 map units. So the distance between those genes are actually measured by the distance between those genes via those distance via those nucleotide sequence that that separates them apart. Okay. In this case, what we are having, we are having three different genes. We are we are researching with three different genes of uh, the Drosophila. So in this Drosophila fly, three different genes for, for example, we have this gene C A N. We have this gene V G, which is for wing color, B for the B for the body color, and we have the same gene. And if we if we put them together in the linear form, what we are having, if we, if we conducted a different experiment like Morgan did, like this kind of experiments, and through these experiments we have the experimental result, and with those experimental results we can determine the recombination frequency. How can determine the recombination frequency? We are actually adding the uh, the those those recombinant uh, uh, recombinant phenotypes, and we divide those recombinant phenotypes with the overall offspring that are formed. And uh, after uh, the we dividing that, we uh, we uh, multiply them into hundred to make a percentage to have an achieve a percentage value. And we are achieving percentage val value by crossing the different uh, different uh, genotypes like this. Uh, we are using dihybrid crosses to do that. After doing them. What we are having, we have a this recombination frequency of 9% between the B and C, and we have recombination frequency of 9.5% between C and V G, and uh, that we add them together, and finally, what we have is second recombination frequency of 17% between this B and V G, what we previously discovered here by this Morgan experiment, and from there we can determine where these genes are located in the gene uh, in the in the chromosome of Drosophila. So that's really help us to determine where the genes are located in not only Drosophila but in different many organisms, uh, many important and individual organisms. Okay. Okay. And uh, this linkage map, how can we make this linkage? And, and let's talk about the li idea of linkage in little bit great detail. For example, let me erase all this again, uh, and after that we'll discuss it. So erase all these things, and after erasing, uh, let let me talk. Yeah, uh, in this m this idea of linkage says uh, that we have we have uh, let me erase this again. We have talked about, for example, we have this chromosome. So we have this chromosome, and in this chromosome we have gene one here. So we have gene one, and we have this gene two. We have another chromosome here, and in this chromosome we have uh, here uh, another gene gene. One, gene two and uh, gene three and gene four. So we have G three, uh, uh, G four, for example, and we have uh, G one and we have a G two here. Okay. We have different genes. Okay, this is, this is the chromosome number one. We have the chromosome number. Two. We have different genes in these chromosomes. Let me change the color to demonstrate it. So in this chromosome, what we are looking at, in the first chromosome, we have two genes in one chromosome. That Morgan stated us that two genes can be present uh, in, in the same chromosome, two, two di different genes which indicate two different traits. And not only two, there are many genes can be present in the same chromosome. And that's what is going on. That's what we can find in any highly organized structure like human and any mammals like this. So they can also find this. So, so in this case, what you are looking at, two, two genes are located very, very closer. If two genes are located really closer, the chance of recombination between these genes with other chromosomes is really, 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 really fewer.
but in this case we have chromosome 2 the gene 3 and gene 4 are located really really distant apart from each other that gives them the freedom to be transferred to be swapped or to be to be translocated from one one chromosome to another chromosome via the recombination really fast so if we have genes which are separated long distance apart have a higher tendency of having recover uh, recombination okay so they have a, uh, they have a, a, a losing linkage they have they are not tightly linked say, so are loosely linked in this picture what we are having two genes the genes are situated really close if the genes are situated in this place they are, they'll be more close so more the close the more close the genes situated in a same chromosome the m the less frequency of having crossing over is established and that is uh, uh, that is uh, demonstrated that's a fact that's a fact actually okay so that's why it is important uh, for the for understanding this linkage in these cases okay so this is linkage so linkage means to have those two genes uh, uh, at the point where that, that where those were at the time uh, so we have, we have the chromosome 1 we have gene 1 and gene 2 in the chromosome 1 so during those cell division and uh, meiosis uh, division these genes are uh, the, 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 the chance uh, of probability of separating those genes apart via crossing over is really smaller so the, the in this case the, the recombination frequency between these genes will be smaller that's why i'm going to i'm talk, uh, i'm actually intending intending to say in this picture the recombination frequency will be higher because uh, the recombination chance or probability of recombination uh, occurred between these two genes during cell meiosis division is higher and that's why if we conduct a map we have a small recombination frequency so you have a small map unit distance that will give up the exact amount of the, those uh, genetic positions and this picture we, that also gives us that's why we use a linkage map to conduct the genetic map that's why we use a linkage to conduct the genetic map okay let's go talk about the chromosomal basis of sex we have talked about that the morgan uh, stated us that the uh, sex uh, linkage is done uh, or we, we can have the sex linkage sex linked inheritance in case of those uh, drosophila eye color we see this but in case of us in case of mammals like humans we have the 44 autosomes and we have xy for males we have 44 autosomes and xx for female so this the actual transfer of the sex chromosomes or sex inheritance is little bit different than the autosomal uh, cells because autosomal case uh, it is it is not about uh, it, it is about the homozygous and heterozygous states we have if we have the heterozygous that's fine if it has homozygous that's fine uh, if we have the homozygous recessive that's only it, it has the uh, achieve of ca catching that thing but in this case what we are having we are, we are not having the same sets of chromosome because if we talk about autosome autosomal chromosome we are talking about the same sets of chromosomes so if we cross between two autosome cells so autosome 1 and autosome 2 for example it's, it's 2 it's 1 we cross between them but we are crossing we are crossing between the same types of uh, cells which are having the same sets of chromosome but in this case we are not having the same sets of chromosome we are having a different set of chromosome uh, which is y which is different than x in this in this female we have two x so same set of double uh, dupla duplicative chromosomes so if, if, if from this this parents what we have we have one x one y so in this parent we have, uh, we, have we are having uh, only x so this is a uh, I don't uh, no, this is this is wrong. So we have we have to have two x's here. We have to have two x. We have to have one x. So this y is uh, it is a mistake. By miss is a fault of this picture. And so one x uh, from th from this mm, female one one x and one y from the male. Because uh, if you have to give the, the, the x are the same version. Remember same version. We have two books. So use one uh, book only. So we don't need to use two books. So after that we can produce 50% of them uh, female and 50% male. So male means X Y with 44 uh, autosome and this. So this is uh, so let's talk about detail about uh, the inheritance system. And before talking about the uh, inheritance system about this, and let's talk about some other uh, system of sex determination. In case of us, what we are having we are having an X Y determination system. We call it the X Y system. Okay and others for example here in grasshopper what we have an x0 system in this case if the females are uh, are having two x chromosomes and males are having one x only they are not having any y chromosome they are not having any chromosomes so they are having only x system to go through it so so all of all of those grasshoppers will be females so they have the xx xx the only distribution of having this the only chance of having this is xx so all of them will be female okay okay 
and let's talk about the ZW system it is in case of fouls and all this uh, thing you can find this we have a ZW in case of females we have a ZZ in case of males uh, so it's such a difference so you can form the ZZ and ZW in both cases this is quite similar to us we are having X Y are different but in case of the male of this uh, of these fouls and, and uh, they are having the same sets of chromosomes instead of females what we in, in in case of humans we are in case of females uh, they have the same copy of that okay and let's talk about the haplodiploid system it's another important system what you are looking at in this case that will be 32 so in the haplodiploid system we can have the female which are having the 32 set uh, or diploid sets of chromosomes and we have the male which are having the 16 or haploid sets of chromosomes so actually these males are not doing anything for the ferment uh, for, for for the fertilization purposes so everything is done by this female cells and the female cells go and divide on its own and it produces different cells and finally it produces uh, those males so that is called the haplodiploid system it is normally found in case of bees and wasps and so on so the sex chromosome are actually have for many so so this these two are really important concepts that sex chromosome can not only have the uh, the, the characteristics of say, uh, sex but they are they are also having many characteristics unrelated uh, to sex for example uh, for uh, for for seeing a color in case of uh, color so if you have the damage on that those genes which helps us to see different colors you can be a color blind person you have to have the hemophilia uh, control gene so if you have a gene for making those blood clot if you do not have those gene and if you have the, have the man function gene of that type uh, then you you may end up with uh, a hemoph uh, hemophilia which is a really dangerous disease okay and also a gene located on either sex chromosome is called the sex link gene as I've told before so any gene which is in the sex chromosome so suppose the sex chromosome is an X and that's an Y Y is really s small and X is really big in case of us so in this uh, type of divisions in uh, in this uh, suppose here is the locus where we have gene 1 and this gene 1 is again uh, is, is called the sex link gene and gene Y is also sex link gene it's in 2 is also sex link gene okay which is present in a y mm, chromosome okay so now let's talk about the the specific pattern of inheritance of the sex chromosome for example we are talking about here a disease which is carried by this this x uh, linked system so x linked disease here so those diseases are also, also having you can fi find in males most of the time because x linked diseases are normally found in males because females are homozygous uh, of X if we have a, a disease here if we have this disease uh, in one of the, those X a diseased allele then the other one probably will be good one and that's why that disease cannot be shown by that female but in this case that uh, with the females which are having this genotype will be the carrier for the, that disease okay and only way to attack uh, the disease because of uh, because uh, of males are having so if males are having one of these uh, those alleles they will catch the disease because uh, it is X linked because of it is X linked and ma males are having only one X so if he catch that uh, catch that genotype he will catch that disease okay but if you talk about the autosomal thing then uh, then this this chance will be very much favorable for males because that in case of autosomes we can have only only one sets of uh, people can catch the d disease and who have will be the homozygous recessive okay but in this case we are not talking about homozygous or heterozygous purposes we are talking about the presence of x linked or y linked y linked genes so in this case uh, the diseased allele is X a small a and uh, the good allele is capital A so here we have produced sperm with X and a. so what we are having in the first generation no one catch the disease but uh, there are two different uh, so there are carriers uh, which present there for different purposes okay for the, here the carriers so here we can have those carriers and these carriers are in this case is uh, this 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 female is a carrier and this male is also a carrier so after if we cross between them so then we finally end up with the formation of one diseased person and then again if we cross between them uh, cross between this man and any other good uh, 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 or any any carrier if we cross between a carrier and a normal uh, genotype person we can have only one offspring that will have that disease but we if we cross between one carrier one and, one and another one diseased person so we are looking at here is a carrier and normal person we end up with one offspring which which is having the disease and one offspring which is the carrier 
okay and if we cross between a carrier and uh, a diseased person then you'll end up with uh, then you'll end up with uh, one carrier and two diseased persons you end up with two diseased person and one carrier okay so the chance of having disease person increase when you, when you cross between a carrier and disease person that that's we can you can see really really fatal to choose that's why in several times in in, in nowadays we are having this this thalassemia testing and all this kind of testing to actually uh, to actually find out this thing because thalassemia is again uh, uh, inheritance uh, inheritable disease uh, really inheritable disease if you test for for your genetic purposes then then if you are a carrier or not then you can probably uh, able to to stop your offspring to be diseased one it it is really really upsetting and really really very painful to see your offspring having those diseases from from the first day of his life of her life so that's why it's important to test those things before so that's an important concept that i i must tell you in that uh, just just check for all these purposes before marriage check for those those few tests like thalassemia and like all this uh, aids and all this type hiv test and all these tests to confirm the actual uh, actual Uh, actual genotypic uh, uh, scheme of yours okay it's our actually responsibility to to do that now let's talk about another and probably the last part of uh, today's discussion and after that we'll talk about the chromosomal aberrations and the disease uh, formed by the uh, presence of chromosomal aberrations but this is the last part of our uh, today's discussion is the x inactivation in females as we know females are having uh, two x chromosome in case of mammals so mammals are having this x s in case of females and x y in case of males so this xx in case of females what we have two same sets of chromosomes so what what they do they actually make one chromosome active and it it make another chromosome inactive and it actually shrink those chromosome off in a tight uh, structure we call them uh, the bar body the structure is called the bar body in case of us we can find this uh, the presence of this bar body uh, this bar body is really condensed really condensed up to make a sm very smaller x chromosome okay because we have one x chromosome which is fully functional so we don't need that chromosome but if we have two different alleles in this two different chromosome of x we can have a, for example here in case of this cat we have the allele for a black fur in this chromosome which is chromosome 1 uh, is, uh, x1 i can say in this x2 chromosome which is having it is it is having the orange color or, or the allele for uh, the orange fur so if uh, after the cell division for example it can in some cells this cell or this orange or the the, the chromosome or this x1 uh, sorry x2 chromosome is uh, activated and x1 chromosome is inactivated so that that will end up to make or build this orange furs in in the body of this cat and another sets of cells where x uh, where x1 chromosome is uh, is activated and x2 chromosome is inactivated and to form this black furs so what we are having we are looking at uh, the population of fur the population of cell not fur population of cell in the body of this cat not not talking about population of cats actually well we are talking about the population of cells so what we are we are looking at this time so what we are having we are having the same sets of genes same sets of genomes in our different genes so what we can have we can have different alleles present there a uh, different alleles can change the uh, change the expression of or the phenotype of our body and we what we can find in one body so it if in this case what we are having we are having a mixture of all this kind of uh, cell populations which we have one orange for activation and one black for activation and finally end up with the form formation of this kind of cat which is having orange and black fur uh, are mixed whole uh, out of his body okay so it's a mosaic of that character okay that is uh, the thing of uh, of this that's the interesting thing of this x in activation in 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 case of x only we can see that but in case of y we can see that we, but if, if in case of y, x y if we if we uh, if we stop one x chromosome or y, y y y chromosome that because those chromosomes are different they will shut down the function of several genes and that will lead to devastating effect and finally leads to the death actually so and and uh, many times uh, different aberrations can be done where we can have c sets of this x we where we can have one x so no uh, one x will be deleted in case of this uh, this uh, 
males in case of males it will end up with uh, one or uh, another x so x x y for example Th those are different syndromes that you can find if we have this sex chromosomal aberrations and for those purposes we will end up with different sex characteristic differences and all these things that that is really bad that is really painful and really humiliating uh, in some uh, purposes so we'll talk about this next time but this is uh, that this is about the chromosomal inheritance and how the inheritance is transferred from one generation to another generation and morgan